So in this video I want to describe um, something called convolution. So let me write down the equation for the convolution. So the convolution is y of t equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of tau times h t minus tau respect to tau. Now, what can we say about this equation? Well, uh, first of all, I'll, I can name what these symbols are. Um, so x, so y is the output of the system. x is the input to the system. And h is what's called the impulse response. Those of you who are familiar with uh, the Laplace, Laplace domain, um, consider this the uh, transfer function. So this whole thing is called the uh, convolution integral. Now you can think of it uh, as taking two, two functions, x and h, operating on them and producing a third. Okay? In terms of control theory, what we have here is some intrinsic property of the system, the impulse response. We apply some arbitrary input, continuous arbitrary input, and we get an output. Okay, so this is, this convolution convolution can be used to uh, obtain the output for a system given any input. Now in the Laplace domain, the equivalent in the Laplace domain is simply uh, y y of s equals x of s times h of s. In fact, they're very closely related. In the Laplace domain, we multiply. In the time domain, we integrate. And this is why the one of the reasons why the Laplace domain uh, tends to be more popular because multiplication is easier than integration. So what we want to consider here is where uh, the convolution integral comes from. Okay, let's start then by uh, looking at the effect of single uh, pulsars on a system. So let me draw uh, two axes. That's time. And on this axis, I'm going to have some input function x of t, and this is going to this is going to follow some some curve like that. And I'm going to draw on this curve uh, one pulse here, and this is uh, one of many pulses. First pulse is at the beginning, and there's a whole set of pulses along here. In fact, there's going to be n pulses. Now, let's say that the width of the pulse is delta tau, and the distance to the last pulse, or to this pulse, will be n times delta tau. Okay, so all the pulses along here are delta tau wide, and there's n of them, so the entire, the time it takes to reach this pulse is n delta tau. What about the value, um, what about the value of the pulse? Well, the value of the pulse will be x of n delta tau. All right. What about the area? The area of a single pulse will be um, will be its height. Will be its its height, which is x n delta tau, times its width, which is delta tau. So that gives us the area. Now we can make this we can make this this pulse or any of the pulses as thin as we like. If we make it thin enough, it'll turn into an impulse with the strength given by the area. So if I make this really thin, I can also describe this pulse as x and uh, delta tau delta tau times uh, the impulse at n delta tau. Okay. So this this term here basically picks out the x value at n delta tau. Uh, all other values are zero because uh, values that are outside n delta tau are zero uh, for the impulse. However, what I can do though is consider all impulses, all n impulses along here, add them all up, and I will actually get um, x of t. 
So if I add them all up, all the way from minus infinity to infinity, so that's every one of them, and I add them all up, I'll get n delta tau. So I should say that this summation is over n, delta tau, delta t minus n delta tau. Okay, so now that this sum describes the entire curve x of t. Now I can take uh, delta tau to zero, and if I do that, I end up with an integral. So delta tau turns into d tau. So I have an integral from minus infinity to infinity. x tau, oops, that should be delta tau, sorry. That's n delta tau. So n delta tau turns into tau. Uh, delta t minus, this turns into um, tau. And then d tau. Okay. So this, this integral here is a long-winded way of describing uh, x of t. Now what about the output? What happens to the output or what happens to the impulse uh, response to, the, to this system? Uh, let me draw another set of axes. Time. So in this case I'm going to have an impulse here. Oops. I don't like that. Let's put a straighter one in. So I'm going to put an impulse here. I might have area 1. What will the response of the system look like? Well, the response of the system is given by the impulse response. And it will look something like this. Maybe it starts at zero, rises up, and then falls back down. I'm going to call this h of t. This is the impulse response. Okay. What happens if I were to move the impulse along? So this is delta t. What happens if I move the impulse along there? So t minus a, what happens to the response then? Well, as long as we assume the system is time invariant, invariant, all that happens is that the response just moves on by the same, same amount of time and does that. So now this is now h t minus a. So I can write down that given a an impulse, uh, a uh, shifted impulse at A, my response will be H T minus A. Now what happens if I change, so what happens if I change the um, strength of the impulse to K? So instead of having an area of 1, it has an area of K. So the strength now of the impulse is K delta T minus A. Now because the system is linear, uh, I can just scale, the, the input response just gets scaled by the same amount. Okay, so we've used here time invariance and, and scaling to uh, reach this conclusion. Now I can have a whole series of impulses along here. In fact, I can have a whole set of them, different strengths. In fact, these strengths then represent uh, some input curve, a whole sequence of them, just as we did up here. Right? In fact, we can obtain a similar equation to this, but instead of the delta being there, we would put a h there. So let me write that down. So I can represent uh, the output now. So we're talking about the output. Okay. The output is a sum or minus infinity to infinity of all the imp of all the impulses that's their strength times the impulse response okay so this bit here is k and this bit here is that h there now once again i can take delta tau to zero so that the output then becomes an integral. So this delta tau becomes d tau. This n delta tau becomes tau. So I end up with x 
tau h t minus tau d tau. And you recognize this as the convolution integral. And that completes the video.